now to discuss all things tech is Sanford Dickert. He is a tech entrepreneur. He was also the chief technology officer during John Kerry's presidential campaign back in 2004. Great to have you on the show, Sanford. Um, so, the big question of the day we've been trying to address mm. is why Europe doesn't have a Google or a Yahoo? Why can't we make it work on that size and scale in the tech world? It's unfair to compare Europe and the EU to the U.S., especially after 150 years in the U.S. of the risk-taking and efforts that go on in the Valley. Consider in 1849, when everybody came out to do gold, in the 1900s, where we're doing all sorts of technology, Stanford created, everyone was there in a centralized location with capital, are you, are you, people. Are you telling me that Europeans don't take risks? I'm sure they do, it's just it's not the same size market, right? And it's also fragmented regulation-wise. I would say that, yes, it's fragmented regulation-wise, and that is the biggest issue, is that risk is the problem. And taking risk here, you're penalized more frequently and more harshly. So regulatory pressures in all of the countries. Evidently, in 2012, the EU has been talking about changing regulatory issues for bankruptcy. In the U.S., Chapter 11 allows an entrepreneur to take a big risk and then try again. Here, it's a stigma. So failure isn't stigmatized, but also it has a lot to do with the laws that protect people's data, also the technology world, and that seems to be a real stumbling block for some of these tech entrepreneurs. I'd suggest not as much because Google's success was about building tools that people wanted to use. Facebook, if you look at WhatsApp, all of these applications were tools for everybody to use. The regulation, the privacy, you solve the problem. That's what technology and that's what brain power does. It's not difficult to solve. Regulatory is just one of the constraints. So what is the future here for the European technology landscape? Is it to build these small to medium-sized disruptive technologies just so that basically they can get bought by a Yahoo or a Google and then they go stateside? I would argue against that. It is one of the options because when you have such a large market, when you have such freedom in terms of investment, yes, you can go get acquired by the US. But if you're trying to create an ecosystem like they're doing here in London, one of the nicest things that's happened with Tech City is their focus on investment, reducing the tax burden, and creating opportunities by creating a cluster. I've got to ask you before we go, go very briefly about eBay. Yes. Again, more troubles with privacy and things like that. But as usual, it will actually roll over because, as usual, it's always about password hygiene and making sure that you are safeguarding yourself. We do the same thing in our house with a lock. We have security systems. The same thing should occur both online and offline. All right, Sanford Dickert, the director of Rawlings Atlantic, thank you very much for that. I've learned a new word for the day, password hygiene. <laughs>